Let me start by saying this. I enjoyed Solo A Star Wars Story. I thought Alden Ehrenreich did a pretty good job as young Han. I really liked Donald Glover as Lando, and I thought the rest of the cast was good as well. There's some nice set pieces, the soundtrack is actually inspired, and the stuff with Han and Chewie is genuinely great. But Solo falls for a lot of traps that prequels tend to fall to, and I think this really holds the film back. Unlike most people, I was genuinely excited for the film when it was announced. When Han Solo shows up in A New Hope, he's such a cynical and jaded person, I thought the idea of exploring how he became that way was a really great idea. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with prequels. It's a storytelling idea that if used the right way, can really expand and enrich a story's universe and characters. There's nothing wrong with exploring where Han Solo came from. That's actually a neat idea, but you have to be careful while doing it. Unfortunately, Solo doesn't tread carefully enough and it falls for the prequel trap, over explaining and over connecting things from the original films in a gimmicky way. Sound familiar? That's one of the big problems that plagued the prequel trilogy. Hey, remember C-3PO? Well, it turns out he was made by Anakin Skywalker. Hey, remember that cool bounty hunter Boba Fett? Turns out he's the clone of the guy that was used as the template for all the clones in the Clone Wars. Hey, remember the Force, that mystical power? Well, the DeLoreans are a microscopic life form that resides within all living cells. When you over-explain and connect things that fans are familiar with, it can diminish the original story, make it feel smaller. It's somewhat ironic because the purpose for these over-connections is that filmmakers are trying to make things from the original film feel more significant, more powerful, more important. But it ends up having the opposite effect, making things feel less significant, less real. I'm going to be talking about spoilers now, so if you haven't seen Solo, I would recommend not watching this until you have. Earlier on in the film, Han is trying to escape from his home planet Corellia and decides to join the Empire to get away. The Imperial officer asks Han what his name is and Han gives him his first name, but tells him he has no family, he has no last name. So the Imperial officer says something to the effect of, hmm, all right, we'll call you Han Solo. Get it? Because he's alone? He's Solo? You know, when Han Solo said his name in A New Hope, I never once questioned it. I never thought how he got that name. Like, I just assumed it was the name given to him at birth by his parents, who were also Solos. But now we know his name was given to him by a random Imperial recruiter? It makes Han's entrance in A New Hope feel less powerful. This scene actually reminds me of a scene from another movie, The Godfather Part 2. Now, The Godfather Part 2 is a sequel that uses flashbacks to show how Vito Corleone rose to power. There's a scene in the film where young Vito, whose birth name was actually Vito Andolini, comes to Ellis Island. An immigration officer asks Vito what his name is, and the man with Vito tells the immigration officer his name is Vito Andolini from Corleone. Vito Andolini from Corleone. Corleone. Vito Corleone. The immigration officer, either because he mishears him or misreads his card or doesn't like his original name, changes his name to Vito Corleone, and thus Vito Corleone is born. On the surface, this scene might seem to suffer from the same problem that the solo scene does. Did we really need an origin for the name Vito Corleone? But I think this scene works in a way that the solo scene doesn't. Having Vito's name change signifies a major change in Vito's life, and that he's about to go on a tremendous journey that he's going to become someone completely different than who he would have been had he lived his entire life as Vita Andolini in Sicily. And the difference between Solo is in The Godfather Part Two, we see these changes actualized in the film and in Robert De Niro's performance. The origin of Vito Corleone's name is a small yet powerful moment when you look at how he changes throughout the film. But showing the origin of Han's name doesn't signify any change for Han's character. He pretty much stays the same for the entire film, never really growing, Whereas in The Godfather Part 2, we continually watch as Vito grows and changes and amasses more power. And all of this can be traced back to that small moment when his name was changed. When he came to a new country filled with new opportunity and was given a new name. It all works to deepen his character. When you go back and watch the first Godfather, anytime the name Corleone is mentioned, it has more meaning behind it. Because now we know how Vito got that name and how symbolically it was the start of something extraordinary. And the film takes time to dive deep into that, but none of that weight and attention is given to the origin of Han's name in Solo. 
It feels cute and gimmicky, an over-explanation of something that we didn't need. It adds nothing to his character. I think that's the biggest difference between The Godfather Part 2 and Solo when it comes to exploring these two characters. The Godfather Part 2 treats Vito like an actual person who existed and explores who that person was in a very natural way. Solo treats Han not like a person, but like a pop culture icon and explores his origin only at a surface level, never diving too deep, only wanting to give a highlight reel of Han's greatest moments, getting his blaster, the Kessel Run. The Godfather Part 2 shows it is possible to explore iconic characters and gain something out of it. It's interesting to me that a lot of people say that they prefer the second half of this film to the first half. Many people seem to dislike the scenes on Corellia. I'm the exact opposite. I thought the first half, particularly the scenes on Corellia, apart from the name scene, were some of the strongest parts of the film. On Corellia, there was no iconic blaster, there was no tongue-in-cheek references to the original trilogy, nothing felt gimmicky. It was just a story about a young man named Han trying to survive on this harsh planet, and I think that's the closest Solo gets to diving into that same type of exploration that The Godfather Part 2 does. Once Han leaves Corellia, all that potential is thrown out the window, and the film turns into a safe, kind of gimmicky ride for the most part. All right, so later on in the film, it's revealed that Emphis Nest, this marauder who's been chasing and killing our heroes for the entire film, is actually a part of the rebellion. And Han decides to help Emphis Nest and her fellow rebels by giving her the coaxium and betraying the crime boss, Dryden Voss. This part of the film really bothered me. I loved Han Solo's arc in the original trilogy. He goes from an a-hole selfish smuggler to rebel hero. One of the most important moments of his arc being when he comes back in the Falcon to aid the rebels trying to destroy the Death Star. It's a great moment. I always figured that Han was a selfish smuggler for most of his life and that this moment when he comes back to help Luke after previously leaving was a big moment in his life. That this is where he really started to change and really the first time he decided to stick his neck out for the rebellion or really for anyone. This was the beginning of Han Solo's transformation. But Solo throws all that away and says, no, actually, 10 years ago, Han already helped out the rebellion. And not only that, he indirectly helped fund the rebellion. Everything about this makes Han's decision to come back and help the rebellion in A New Hope feel less powerful. Because apparently now he already did this on a smaller scale, to be fair, 10 years ago when he decided to help Enfys Nest get the coaxium. There's even a, a really bad moment when Enfys says, maybe Han will join the rebellion one day. And Han practically stares into the camera and says, don't count on it, or something to that effect. Everything about it is so forced. It makes Han's journey in A New Hope less powerful, less real. Like he's just this puppet on a string heading in one direction. Instead of being this character that had so many different possibilities and happened to fall into a really great adventure in A New Hope. It makes things feel too small. The universe too small, too claustrophobic. At the end of the film, it's revealed that Kira is in fact working for Darth Maul. So now it turns out that Han Solo, the random smuggler who decided to help out Obi-Wan and Luke on Tatooine, was actually in love with the girl who was the subordinate to one of Obi-Wan's main rivals. It's too overly connected. I liked it when Han was just a smuggler that ended up falling into this adventure and changing as a result. But now it's revealed that not only did he already help out the rebellion in a big way 10 years ago, He's directly connected to Darth Maul and by that, directly connected to Obi-Wan through his relationship with Kira. All this does is take away from the mystique of the original trilogy and its characters. Prequels don't have to be like this. It is possible to tell a story of an iconic character without having to overconnect and explain things. To show us the natural growth of how that character came to be, who we know them to be, without pointless fan service that only serves to hamper the storyline. There's actually a good story in Solo, a Star Wars story. It's a story that doesn't involve iconic blasters and catchphrases, that doesn't involve rebellions, it doesn't involve connecting characters that had no right to be connected, and that doesn't involve explaining things that don't need to be explained. It's a story that involves a young man named Han Solo, a young man that grows up on the mean streets of Corellia and finds himself on the path to becoming an adventuring smuggler. I wish we got to see more of that story. I love Star Wars, and I know that right now, the people who are working on these films, that they love Star Wars too, and that they're trying their best to give us the best Star Wars films that they can, and I really admire them. They're seriously, you know, really hardworking, creative people who are trying their best, and who are very kind and very thoughtful. 
and who I believe have the best intentions for Star Wars in mind. But I also think there is more to Star Wars than what they're giving us. It's been revealed that James Mangold is working on a Boba Fett movie. I really like James Mangold. I think he's a very talented filmmaker and a very thoughtful person. And if this film is a prequel, well, like I said, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with prequels. I just hope that the film doesn't fall for the same traps that so many prequels do. That it doesn't feel the need to over explain and connect things. That it's not filled with cutesy references that make the world feel smaller and less real. I hope there's not a scene where a guy says to Boba Fett, hey, if you're ever on Tatooine, watch out for that Sarlacc pit. It is possible for these spin-off films to be more, to expand and enrich the Star Wars universe, to deepen these characters. And I hope that the Boba Fett film does just that. Thank you for watching guys, I really do appreciate it. You guys are awesome.